Hey, Jared here again. And today we're going to be talking about this really, really common problem of binging, overeating, emotionally eating, sort of in the evening time. After work, after you've got the kids picked up, after dinner, you're eating and you're not hungry. And we're going to be first talking about how normally people deal with this problem. And then we're going to be talking about how um, sort of we do things a little bit differently at eating enlightenment and how not, not to, and we're, we're really just building on, we're building on top of what you probably already know. So we're going to start off kind of with the basics just for one minute, and then we'll get into this new stuff that is very exciting. So let's just say, you know, I can remember too, um, coming home after school, college, work, etc., and I've meal prepped for the day, I've eaten enough food, etc. I'm not hungry. I've even just eaten a big meal. But then here I am, an hour later, right after dinner even, just, I can't stop. I'm eating. I'm not hungry. I'm just sort of in a weird zone. What is happening? The pattern keeps happening. I try to sell myself no, but somehow... I just don't care and I end up eating and then I feel really bad and why does this keep on happening and oh my gosh, what is happening? You know, that type of thing. And then of course, you're, 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 I remember feeling stuffed and, and then you don't feel like eating the next day and, and then you're all, you know, you're ashamed and, and the shame is sticking with you the next day. It's just not a good cycle to be in. So what do most people do to deal with it and then what do we do differently? I, again, most people, they, they sort of know like, they can't be too hungry, so they're meal prepping, or they're trying to have a nutritious lunch. They're trying to eat nutritiously. They're trying to eat, f get get enough food. They're you're, you're probably trying mindfulness, that type of thing, calming down, meditating. That's great. That's great, and that that can get you far. It can get you up to a certain point. But what I have learned through studying my own mind. You know, I learned, lived as a Zen monk for a while. I've, I've gone through years and years of therapy myself and really studied the mind. And the one thing that I missed myself as a Zen monk, that I missed in my early days of trying to recover from binging, just recover, be, be normal, be free, just be my best self, was I always thought that I was one person. And what I mean by that was I was always blind to these different parts with their different motivations. I always thought I was one person basically, and I had this other thing that I want to get rid of. And as I learned to integrate this part, this binge part, I learned to listen to this part and to understand what it was wanting from me. And I think the big insight was learning that I can talk to this part and it could talk back and we could have a dialogue. We could have a conversation. It was, it was mind blowing stuff when I first got into it. And now, you know, 10 years later, this is what I teach people, what I've been teaching people, what I see at eating disorder, eating disorder residential treatment centers. I think this voice component is the next step. And that's sort of what we work with at Eating Enlightenment. So let's just take this example of you're late at night after dinner. What's going on? How do you work with it from this parts perspective? Well, we first just want to pause and sort of understand the different parts and where most people get confused is that at this time of day the mo probably the most prominent part is the invisible part it's sort of a distraction it's sort of a blankness it's a it's a numbness you know you've used all your energy throughout the day you've been stressed out a little bit not too much but a little stressed out and you don't have much energy so this is sort of an unthinking part it might it's invisible because unlike um, those food cravings that sort of just build up all over time and or, or maybe like a sudden trigger that just sets you off, this is sort of like you don't really feel anything and you're not sure why you just keep on eating. And it's there's some voice that doesn't care, but it's very hard to just be there with that voice. It's very hard to feel that. This is one of the parts, believe it or not. This is what's really, really fascinating about eating enlightenment is that we can see this invisible part as a part with its own motivations, this blankness, and we can start talking to this part. And so we got to assume 
the part is not bad. We got to assume the part is trying to protect you. And so when we assume it's trying to protect you and that we can talk to it, it shifts everything. And so what you do is you try to get a sense of this part somehow. I know this is tough because it's not really a feeling. It's more of a lack of a feeling. It's like a blankness or maybe you just, you're not even really feeling your body. It's more like a thought, but we just got to get a sense of the part. Just however it appears for you, however you sort of experience it. And we just we, we, do, we just want to start talking to this part. It sounds weird. I know it sounds a little crazy, but eating enlightenment, it is a little crazy. And, um, and so, and so let's say this part, um, is coming up and you just say something like, Hey, blankness or forgetfulness or zoning out or, or, or whatever. Hey, it's, it feels like you're, you're, you must, I know you're trying to protect me somehow. You're, you're, you're making me not concentrate. You're making me sort of unable to think. You're making me blurry or foggy or confused. You're making me numb so that I eat food. And I just want to understand why. Just pause and listen. And if you're, if you're by yourself, it can be a little bit hard to make sense, but just see if this next statement of mine just makes sense. Saying something to this part, like, it seems like you're trying to numb me out somehow. Or, or, or this, this other part that doesn't care, right? This other part that doesn't care. I'm switching. I'm actually switching topics a little bit. I'm switching to this part, by the way, that, that doesn't care. Um, this part that doesn't care. It seems like you don't care. You're trying to protect me somehow. Are you trying to protect me from burnout that I've been working hard all day and now you need to kick back and relax? Now you want me to stop thinking. I've been thinking all day and now you want to make me go blank so that I stop thinking. You want me to stop feeling. I've been caring so much about other people. I've been caring what other people think about me. I've been worried and stressed out and, and now you have had enough. It sounds like you just want me to go blank. You just want to recharge. It sounds like you might even be trying to protect me from myself. Maybe, you know, the part of me, part of you, <laughs> I told you this stuff is crazy, but the part of it's yeah. So if we're talking this binge part, right? That is you're about to overeat. This binge part is numbing you and it's also rebelling some sort of rebellious quality to it. And we're, we're trying to say, seems like you're rebelling against maybe this productivity part of me that works, 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 cares for others, cares for others, but doesn't care about me. You're rebelling against that. You want to protect me. You want me to take time for me and your way of having me slow down and be with me is to eat food. Is that right? Is that sort of right? Your way is to make me be foggy so that I can't think anymore so that I go to food so that I slow down is that right and just listen just listen and we can start to talk to this part it, it this this part might not be ready yet to not have you eat but maybe we could say something to this part like hey I hear you you are valid I understand that I've been pushing way too hard trying to work and I need to slow down is it possible where instead of making me binge, I'll, I'll sort of, I, I want to know what you need and listen to this part. It says, Oh, I need, I need space. I need calmness. Is it possible if we can try, try getting calmness first and, and then see where we're at? So this is just a little bit of example of how we're working with this part. Um, but the key is, is really, you know, of course you got to eat enough food during the day, right? That's the stuff. This is the, the part stuff. You got to eat enough food during the day. So that's, that's, that's important. But if you've eaten enough food, if you're not hungry, oftentimes it's this dialogue that's missing. You got to talk to these parts. You got to listen to them. You got to understand why they are making you binge, why they are trying to protect you. And, and usually once they're heard, they can sort of relax a little bit. They don't, the, the, the urge to eat or the, the pressure to zone out isn't as strong because the part knows that it's been heard. And, and let's keep in mind too, that this part is, it has its motivation to slow you down or something like this. And if we don't heed that 
message, right? This part is wisdom. Yes, the part of you that binges, it has wisdom. It's trying to do something. In this example, we're kind of going with the assumption that it's trying to slow you down. It's rebelling against the part that works, works, works. If we don't heed that part, right? <clears throat> if we continue to work, then that part's going to get angry and it will make you binge. But, but maybe there can be a little breathing room. And really this example is just um, to show you how we can start talking with these parts, how it might fit into a practical example. Um, and, um, and yeah, so I hope this helps you sort of pause and make sense of that urge when you're eat, overeating at night, helping to see that confusing, foggy, numbing place. Oftentimes it's hard to think of that as a part, but when you can see that as a part that is kind of invisible, it's trying to make you stop thinking, right? It's a part that is trying to make you stop thinking. And when we can see this part as it's trying to protect you, then we can start to shift a little bit. Things can be a little different. So seeing the, this fog as a part and how it's trying to protect you is sort of the key insight here. So um, I hope this helps. Let me know down below if it does. And um, thank you again for your time. Okay. Namaste.